Alright, so after years of asking for it, waiting for it, and honestly doubting whether or not Apple would ever actually do it, iPad OS 26 might finally be the update that makes the iPad feel like a real computer. Now, I've been daily driving iPad OS 26 on the brand new 11 inch M3 iPad Air for the past few weeks. And I gotta say, this thing feels very different. Not perfect, not flawless, but different. Apple finally gave us real windowing, better multitasking, Mac style controls, deeper AI integration, and a UI overhaul that just makes the whole iPad experience feel a little bit more complete. But of course, there are still limitations, trade-offs, and a few weird things you need to know about before you can start updating or buying into this new iPad experience. And that's exactly what we're breaking down today. So stick around because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly whether iPadOS 26 finally delivers the laptop replacement experience or if we're still in iPad limbo. Let's start with the big picture. iPadOS 26 was officially announced at WWDC 2025. At first glance, it looks like the biggest iPadOS update we've ever seen. Honestly, since iPadOS was first separated from iOS. So at first glance, you'll notice this brand new design language Apple's calling liquid glass. This isn't just a cosmetic refresh, this is part of Apple's larger push to unify the visual language across iOS, iPadOS, macOS, watchOS, tvOS, and even visionOS. Everything looks a little more translucent, the blur effects feel richer, softer, and more layered. Menus almost feel like they're floating above the screen, widgets and app windows blend into the background with a semi-transparent frosted glass aesthetic that honestly just looks really clean, especially on this laminated M3 iPad Air display. The important thing though is that this design doesn't feel too busy or too distracting. It feels like Apple found a nice middle ground between minimalism and depth. It's aesthetic, but still functional. This aesthetic isn't a gimmick. This actually feels like what modern iPad OS should have looked like many years ago. All right, so let's get into what everyone's been asking for, multitasking. Because this right here is probably the biggest leap forward for iPad OS since the beginning. Apple finally gave us something that looks and feels much closer to desktop level multitasking. Gone are the days where you're stuck with the rigid split view or that weird slide over floating window system that kind of felt half baked. Now you get fully resizable, free floating windows. You can move them around anywhere on your display, overlap them, resize them however you want, and arrange your workspace like you would on a Mac. You even get proper macOS style window controls, the little traffic light buttons for minimize, maximize, close, sitting right up in the corner of every window. And yes, even a persistent menu bar at the top, giving you direct access to app level controls without needing to dive into a secondary menu. You can actually start stacking apps now, you can keep multiple windows open at once, resize your Safari window, while keeping the notes and files open on the side, and still have background apps running tasks, all simultaneously. And when you zoom out and get a bird's eye view, Apple's borrowed another idea from macOS and brought this expose style apps view to iPadOS 26. One swipe from the bottom and you see every window open across your desktop. Now to be clear, this doesn't mean iPadOS is just macOS. It still has touch first design baked in. The gestures, multi-touch interaction, and the keyboard plus trackpad support are fully integrated. But for the first time, Apple finally gives you flexibility to work the way you want to work. Whether you're using touch, pencil, keyboard, or a trackpad, it all feels natural. One of the other big changes in iPadOS 26 is that Apple finally has brought over some previously Mac exclusive apps and features directly to the iPad. First up is Preview, which honestly should have been on an iPad years ago, but now you can natively open, annotate, sign, and edit PDFs directly inside Preview on iPadOS. Full Apple Pencil support included. Combined with the Files app improvement, which we'll talk about in a second, this makes the iPad legitimately useful for document workflows now. You also get a new Journals app. This one's been on the iPhone for a bit, but on iPad it shines even more with Apple Pencil support, larger screen real estate, and deeper integration into your personal health and mindfulness data if you're using Apple Health. There's also a native phone app now. Yes, you can now take calls directly on your iPad and even screen calls or send quick responses. It's a small thing, but it helps the iPad deeper into being a standalone device. Now, if you're like me and you're rocking an 11 inch M3 iPad, iPad Air, you might want to look at these accessories that I'm about to show you. Let's start with the new Magnetics keyboard case. This is the star of the show. You've got a detachable keyboard with a 135 degree adjustable hinge, which means whether you're typing notes, sketching, or watching a video, you're always at the perfect angle. And it's not just flexible, it's also smart. Built-in patented shortcuts let you switch between writing tools, activate Siri, or jump between your steps and notes. It's made for apps like GoodNotes or Notability, and yes, it even supports full trackpad gestures. There's a seven color backlight, upper pen slot, and a 200 hour battery life. 
it's kind of the perfect productivity beast for your iPad. Now, if you don't need a keyboard all the time, check out the Magnetics flip case. It gives you the same 135 degree stand, but in a slimmer, lighter profile. You still get vertical and horizontal viewing, auto wake and sleep, and a detachable magnetic back that literally snaps onto your fridge if you're cooking or presenting. One thing I really like about this case and something I haven't seen much from other brands is the magnetic attachment on the side. So check this out. I can take the Apple Pencil out of the built-in holder and it just snaps magnetically to the side of the iPad. It's got premium materials, built-in pencil slot, and it's super clean and minimalistic. Next up is the EIP Pencil 2. This stylus is magnetic, has 15 hours of battery life, and delivers pixel-perfect precision with double durable nips. If you use your iPad for note-taking or drawing, this one's kind of a no-brainer. And finally, we have the EIP Slim Bag. This thing is water repellent, has multiple compartments, and a retractable handle. Perfect for carrying your iPad, stylus, cables, and much more without looking like you're hauling a backpack around. Altogether, this ecosystem transforms the 11-inch iPad Air from just a tablet into a full productivity setup. If you're interested in grabbing one for yourself, I've got a 20% off discount code just for my viewers. Use code RJTech20. Just hit the link in the description to check out the product page and learn more. Now, you know we can't talk about Apple software in 2025 without talking about AI, or what Apple is calling Apple intelligence. This is where having an M-series chip like the one in my M3 iPad Air really matters. Because a lot of these new AI-powered features are only available on iPads running at least an M1 or newer. We've got Live Translate that now works in FaceTime calls or regular calls, translating speech in real time while you talk. It is surprisingly accurate even though it's still in a beta, although I am curious to see how it handles more complex conversations as updates roll out. In the Notes and Files app, Apple Intelligence can now summarize long documents, auto-fill forms, and even auto-organize your files based on content. Now beyond multitasking and just AI, Apple also made some nice quality of life improvements that will directly benefit power users. The File app finally feels like a real-life manager. You get full list view, better folder syncing, doc folder pinning, and even background export progress indicators while you continue working. It's the kind of thing that sounds small, but makes a huge difference in real-world workflows, especially for creators like myself who often work with large video files and project folders. Apple also improved background task handling, so you can now export a video or render files while continuing to browse Safari, edit notes, or run other apps. This update is finally starting to feel like proper multitasking under the hood. Now, of course, this wouldn't be an iPad OS update without a few frustrating limitations that still exist. First, not all of the apps are fully supported in the new windowing system. A lot of Apple's own apps are optimized, but many third-party apps are still locked to their fixed window sizes, or they don't properly handle overlapping windows. This will get better over time as developer updates roll out, but it's definitely noticeable in the beta. Stage Manager works much better now, but you can still occasionally get odd window snapping or resolution scaling issues depending on the monitor that you're using. And despite all of these massive improvements, there's still that underlying sense that iPadOS operates with invisible walls Apple doesn't want you to fully break down. Like you still can't fully install apps outside of the Apple Store unless you're in the EU, you still can't run full desktop class apps like Final Cut fully outside of Apple's walled garden. And there are still limitations on app sandboxing and resource sharing compared to true macOS or Windows systems. So with all of that being said, who is iPadOS 26 really for? Well, if you're a student, creative, or a casual power user who wants tablet first hardware with real laptop level productivity features, iPadOS 26 on something like this M3 iPad Air is honestly the best that the iPad has ever felt. If you were like me and you were frustrated with the old multitasking system, you hated the split view limitations, or felt like the iPad never truly lets you work like a computer, iPadOS 26 goes a long way towards fixing all of that. But if you're someone who needs total software freedom, app compatibility, or heavy pro level desktop apps, we're still not quite there yet. This isn't macOS on an iPad and Apple is still being deliberate about keeping those worlds separate. So the bottom line, iPadOS 26 is the most complete, most flexible, and most mature version of iPadOS we have ever seen. Liquid glass makes it beautiful, full windowing makes it functional, Apple intelligence makes it smarter, and for most people, especially M-series iPad users, this finally feels like the vision Apple's been chasing for years. It's not perfect, but man, it's getting pretty close. If you made it to the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below. I would love to know who my true supporters are. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the EIP products mentioned in this video. They are honestly legit. I'll catch you guys all in the next one, and don't forget to flex with your tech.